When you're looking for a science curriculum, what you want is something that will inspire awe and wonder in your child. Something that sparks them to want to learn more about God's creation. I try to steer away from things that just give my child the answer or state a bunch of facts. I want them to think things through for themselves and to ask questions. I want them to learn how to learn and to love learning. So as we look through some of these curriculums, keep some of those thoughts in mind and make sure to stick around for the fifth one because I think that's my favorite that I continue to lean towards year to year. Now there are advantages to a Becca science curriculum. A Becca's gonna be really good if you are considering putting your child back into a public or traditional school education at some point because they definitely won't fall behind. They're going to be hitting all of those points and mile markers when they're supposed to be. And so that's what I think a traditional curriculum like a Becca is really good for. Typically, this isn't something that I would go for. It states a lot of facts. It shows a lot of information. As a child, this probably would have been good for me because I didn't like nature and the closest I wanted to get to it was a book. So if you have a student that is super resistant to nature, this may be what you get. But Really, I think we should be trying to inspire our children to want to be in nature, to want to explore with their hands and their minds and to get a little bit more involved. Now, Abeka does offer different things like questions, activities. There's this really cute one about how to make your hand like a beaver's uh, with webbed by using a bag. And I think that that's a really creative and a fun idea. Hopefully these flip throughs have given you an idea of what you can expect from some early science curriculums that Abeka gives. So we did start with Abeka, but it didn't take long before I realized this wasn't what I wanted to be doing and my friend recommended trying out Sassafras. Sassafras is a novel about two kids that go on different adventures to different countries, biomes, and they explore different animals in the first book. Uh, after that they do like the human body and some other things. I don't know because we didn't get there. But the adventures are really fun. My kids really liked it. However, Personally, I thought that it leaned heavily on the adventures and not so much on the beneficial information. And I already had lots of other books that I was reading to my kids and so I wanted a uh, better literature for them. I thought that the structure of these stories was kind of lacking and uh, that like reading the Bear Grylls books, those that's an excellent series if you haven't read it that it actually gave my kids more information than this curriculum did. Now I will say that there is a lap book to go along with this book so your kids can be journaling along with it. There's also experiments that they recommend. It is an option and my friend ended up doing the audiobooks with it because her kids just begged her so much to keep going with it and uh, because there was an audio option she thought that that worked really well for them but she was pretty eager to move on to something else too. This is a good time to mention though that if you can teach your kids science through narration, through a story, that's gonna stick with them a lot more than some of these factual books, right? And so I am going to do a video coming up about science chapter books for kids. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when that video is available. I have great recommendations that have worked really well for our family and I'm excited to share them with you. There are a couple things about apologia science that really stand out, especially as a Christian. This one is called Exploring Creation with Zoology, Swimming Creatures of the Fifth Day. And here you can see some of the other ones that they offer too. How could you not be interested? To look into this more, what an interesting approach to take. I really appreciate that from apologia. As we look inside, you can see that that's exactly what this is. For a whole year's curriculum, you are going to be focusing on swimming creatures of the fifth day. And so that's a lot of time to spend on water creatures. And I love doing unit studies. A good unit study is like, I'm all about that, but uh, that's a long time. And so if you have done Apologia, tell me in the comments, 
do you did you feel overwhelmed by doing it for so long? Um, I think that I would really appreciate this book as a reference book for when we are doing those topics for unit studies, but I'm not sure that I could designate science for a whole year to uh, one topic like this. It is worth noting that Apologia also offers a notebooking journal to go along with the curriculum. The students can color, take notes, draw pictures of these animals and do things in here. I think that's wonderful for them to offer. Um, also note that there is an audio option that goes along with this. So you could do that uh, instead of mom reading every day. Um, but yeah, so Apologia looks like a fine option. I don't think it's one that we're going to be going with. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Recommendation number four is Master Books. Now, I actually just went to borrow this from a friend, flipped through it, and decided I kind of want this, and she was going to be selling it, so I bought it from her. So here's the catch. My friend was gonna be selling it because she felt like it didn't really give her child more information than they already had from watching Wild Kratts, from reading science chapter books, from just exploring nature. She didn't feel like it was quite advanced enough for where her daughter is. That is the feeling I have gotten from most of these curriculums, that my kids, we sit down to do it and they're like, oh yeah, mom, we know, we saw it in Wild Kratts. Hit like if you relate to that. but. This one I did think was interesting in the fact that it gives these unit portions that you could even just rip out of the book and have your child do to brush up or if you're having a week when you're not really gonna make it outside or you need some filler worksheets, maybe there is something uh, that they could work a little bit more on. That is what I purchased this curriculum for. But as you can see here, the lessons are super short and I love that uh, Masterbooks, a lot of it goes Charlotte Mason style, just these really short little bits of learning and then encouraging the child to go out and to observe something and learn more from it. Um, and I think that you could really do that well with this book. So. I decided to get it used and to be able to just kind of use it as worksheets. That's how I get a lot of our stuff actually. Uh, but this is set for kindergarten through second grade. I do think that it is more advanced than anything I have seen through a Becca. I could see us going with this in the future. As long as you are just doing these short lessons and then going out to learn more about them in nature, I think it's a really great setup for your family. Before we get to the last curriculum, let's refocus. Why are you teaching science? Is it just to lay the basis so that later on they can continue building upon that? Technically, studies have proven that when we learn things later on in life, we tend to just grasp it and understand it better. And so maybe building and building and revisiting those same topics every year could bring on more fatigue than if we just learned them later on. So again, let's cultivate that desire to learn. Those questions of how is this made? How is this possible? Where did it come from in our children? And I think nature journaling is the way to do this. And I'll admit, I have not been super great about this in the past. This is something I want to continue learning about. The idea here is that you grab a notebook and you go outside and you see a leaf or a bug or a flower and you sketch the image of that. Then you go back inside and you find out how to label those different parts. Maybe you ask questions about what you observed outside and then later go and find those answers. And that, this cultivates learning how to learn in our children too. I mean, think about all the people in science history. They didn't just go to a book and learn it and figure it out and move on. Like scientists actually have to discover these things for themselves. And by doing this, we are teaching our children how to be little scientists. Now that's not gonna work forever, but it works for now. And that will help them as they continue to learn about science in the future. But maybe you're like me. Going outside is not your thing. You aren't really curious about nature and you struggle in some of these ways. Maybe you're scared that you don't know the answers. Your children are great at asking questions. 
allow them to ask those questions. And if you don't know the answer, say, let's go figure that out together and help them learn how to learn. Now, if you need a little bit more guidance, I recommend Christian Liberty's Nature Readers. I actually had these as a child myself when I was homeschooled for a few years, and I really liked them. So when I started homeschooling again, I asked my mom if I could have her set. These are really fun. They are just stories about uh, a wasp taking care of her babies and kind of putting you in that setting. They don't dumb down information for kids. They actually are great literature that allow your children to use their imagination and to feel like they're there and to understand what's going on. Your children are very smart. Now they could be drawing the images of a wasp while you are reading about that. And so I really like these. They're fairly inexpensive so you can check them out. I think that that's a really good option for our youngest children. Now, if you're curious a little bit more about how we're going to implement this in the upcoming school year, I have that video coming out next week with all the curriculum that we are going to be using. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, here's how we teach history in our house. Go ahead and click on this video.